Hey guys, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to identify the beat. What's a beat, you ask? Well, when you're listening to a track and you're nodding your head, you're typically nodding to that main driving beat, unless you have no rhythm. But you guys got rhythm, so you're good to go. So I'm just gonna play this track right here, just as an example. And you'll notice I'm nodding my head to a sort of tempo, the rhythm of the main driving beat. Now this is a house track, so it has kick drums on every head nod, right? So it makes it a little easier to find that beat. And I'm sure you guys have done this. When you're listening to a track and you really dig it, you might be nodding your head, right? Well, you can also see it in the software. So if you look right here, you stop the track and just jump back a little bit. Here we have some uh, lighter kick drums, so you hear that? The little knocking sound. So you see it, it's right here and you'll have like transients right here. So this is the beat grid that I have already set up. And if you wanna learn how to set up beat grids, definitely check out the Tractor Pro 2 course because I show you how to do that. But the beat grid's already set up. So we have the transients, these little dots at the top and the bottom, and it's showing us where the main driving beats fall. And you'll notice it kind of falls in this track where these little green parts are. So it's not on every beat, because you'll see right here in the middle, there's this blue one, but there's no transient there. It's just on the main head nods where you would nod your head to. And then if I forward a little bit, you can see it's here as well. So let me play it. You can see where those transients are falling. Now that was a house track. Let's nod our head to a broken beat track. So. House track is uh, also called like four on the floor because every beat has a kick drum. Uh, and most house tracks are in four, four time and we'll get, that's a time signature. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that's why they call it four on the floor. Uh, but a broken beat track is like hip hop, dubstep, trap, uh, break beat, drum and bass, where you don't have a kick drum on every uh, driving beat or driving head nod, so to speak. Uh, so here's an example. So we have some kicks in, in some different areas, right? Uh, and if you look at it, let me zoom in so you can see where the transients are falling. You can see it's not falling on every single head nod, but we're nodding our head, right? To that main driving beat. Now in a broken beat track, you typically have a kick drum on one and three, and a clap or a snare drum on two and four. So if you look at this, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you see, let me stop it and just show you right here. We have uh, uh, like one is here and the two is here. So that's like a clap sound, right? And then we have another kick drum sound. And then we have another clap sound. So that's pretty standard for broken beat tracks. You have the kick drums on one and three and the snare drums or the claps on two and four. And that's what you wanna to listen to when you start to get to beat matching, which I'm gonna show you in the next course. But for now, right now, we're just figuring out how to listen to stuff. Uh, so I would listen to, if I was mixing broken beat, let's say drum and bass, I might be listening for the snares to match up the beat. But if I'm mixing house, I'm listening for the kick drums. That just is what works for me. You would play around and find what works best for you. But the reason why I pick those, song, uh, those sounds is because it's the most prominent sound in those tracks. So that's what you wanna do when you're picking sounds to listen to to beat match. Uh, so the next thing I wanna show you is how to isolate the different sounds in the track. So we have the EQ right here, and I'm gonna show you how to isolate the drum sounds in the track. Cause you really don't wanna really focus on all the other instruments and stuff. Uh, when you're beat matching, you really wanna listen for the drums. Now, if there aren't any drums, you might need to listen to a synth that's repetitive or something like that. But for the most part, you're identifying the different types of drums. And the way to tune your ears to the different type of drums is using the EQ. So right here, I'm just gonna turn it all the way down so if I just turn up the lows, that's the kick drum. So let's get to where the kick drum's playing. You hear that? 
and it's very prominent. That's what we're nodding our head to. Then the mids is the middle range, the middle frequency range in the song. And then the highs are like the snares and the cymbals and the really high end stuff, the high frequency part of those sounds. You can hear it with the mids, but it doesn't cut through as much, right? So we're listening to those sounds with the highs. So that's how you identify your main drum kit. So let's do it with the broken beat track. So let's do the highs first. So you can hear like a hi-hat cymbal sound on the 16th note pattern. And then we have, you can hear that middle range there. But it sounds kind of muted when you take the highs out. Did you notice that? Okay. And then the lows are the bass, the kick drums. So that's how you identify the beat or the head nod, right? And either by listening and nodding your head and also looking at your software because you're using a controller with DJ software, you have that advantage. And that's also how you identify the drum kit and isolate the sounds so that you can really hear them individually by using the EQ right here. So if you wanna learn more, check out the next video.